about to give a very warm welcome to uh, our mayor, uh, Paul Thomas, and his good lady Janet. And as you see, the, uh, the mayoral dog has come too. So we're not going to ask Black Prince to whistle too loudly because uh, we, we think Sergio might be a little bit uh, cautious of that. Um, just a couple of words uh, to say from me, um, and then I'm going to uh, hand over to Nigel to, to tell you more about uh, the background from the Heritage Centre. Uh, I'm going to slightly hijack the opportunity though, because behind us we have Black Prince, and for those of you who are in Railway know, and that's pretty much 100% of those here today, and I've explained uh, to Paul uh, to how to smile at this bit, um, Black Prince has been away from the railway for its overhaul over the last two years. Uh, it's also been out of commission. Um, some would say because the general manager didn't like it, so I'll say it rather than uh, anyone else. General manager likes the engine a lot now. Um, I'm getting old and you know resilient to, to my very e extreme views on things. And uh, it, it's not been in service actively on the railway for for a, a significant number of years. So some of the younger folk here will have never had an, op an opportunity until today to ride behind Black Prince. And you're probably gonna get plenty of opportunities going forward because it has had a very good quality overhaul and is now going to be the most recent addition to our fleet. And we shall be looking forward to using it a lot. So if you didn't get a chance to ride behind it today, you will do over the coming weeks and months. Um, for those who don't know, Black Prince uh, is a 1937 uh, built engine, so it's quite young compared to our fleet of 96 year old engines. And also, uh, it didn't come to the railway till the 1970s when it is reputed that we didn't have enough engines to run the service, so we bought one that was um, not quite so clapped out to do so. Uh, over the years, it's been challenging for its driving and uh, some people have thought it uh, really wasn't worth the effort to keep it going and others have taken the view that it's now been with us longer than it's been anywhere else and therefore it is very much part of the <coughs> Romney fleet and, and I certainly agree with that. Uh, the opportunity was taken uh, long before Covid was thought of, thank goodness, uh, that we would consider having uh, overhaul done not only in our own high quality workshops which is where Dr Sin is at the moment those who are wondering where Dr Sin is but also uh, in uh, in this opportunity we would try uh, someone else who could speed up the overhaul process for us because we want to have as many engines available to work as we move forward towards our 100th anniversary so we took a, a new chance and we went to Cumbria uh, we went to Old Hall Farm and John Fowler Engineering and we had a few conversations, as you do, serious ones, uh, after a while, and got down to the nitty-gritty of whether this, this could work for us, and we've heard good things about their work. Um, and we have to say, it's a pity they can't be with us here today. They have, the, re the reason is they're working hard in Cumbria, but they were down only uh, 10 days or so ago. Um, their, their chief engineer and the guy who worked considerably on the engine uh, were here because they took that much interest in the project that they wanted to see it delivered and, and run here uh, on the end of the trialling that we were lucky enough to be able to do on the Ravenglass and Estale Railway. Um, so the engine has had a lot of miles before it even got here uh, to prove that it really is in, in sound order. So I'm very grateful to, for them as our, our supplier for Ravenglass for letting it run and particularly to colleagues both up there and, and Roger Munn here uh, on my left who doesn't very often stand up in crowds and he's not going to be made to say anything but Rogers and, and, and colleagues have spent a lot of time running the engine up there all in their own time and that's the sort of thing that makes this railway happen so Black Prince um, is back with us uh, to stay but perhaps just as importantly but more for the, the long-term future of the railway um, we have now got the Heritage Centre and this is something which I guess a lot of people have dreamed about for a long time and is now proving to be very popular with our customers. So I'll let Nigel explain a little of the background and where it's going with that. Thank you, Nigel. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. <coughs> the Heritage Centre is a project of the Romney Heighton Doom Church Railway Association, which is the supporters association for the railway. It's not directly a railway project as such from the company. Now, the association was formed in 1967, and one of the key aims of the, the association, even from the early days, was to collect <coughs> photographs and information and stories all about the history of the railway. In 2009, 2009, we were 
converted into a registered charity and our charitable objectives were, and I quote here, <coughs> to preserve and maintain the miniature trains and associated elements on the Rocky Hyde and Dimchurch Railway for the benefit and education of the public, including, without limitation, by the provision of a heritage centre, as well as providing the railway with financial and human resources. The refunding of the rebuild <coughs> of Black Prince is an example of the ongoing financial support, uh, and that was completely funded by the association. And now the establishment of the Heritage Centre achieves another of our aims. Uh, the project has had a long gestation period, not helped by COVID, and many people have contributed. Uh, and a full list of people we thank is on display inside, uh, but I would like to especially mention a few. The work to convert the old paint shop building was led by project manager Nigel Bodell and Andy Champion from the Design and Surveying Consultancy. And Andy, I hope, you said he was going to be here. You're here. Well done, Andy. Thank you very much for that. The building work was done by East Kent firm Hipperson, who specialise in heritage projects. Unfortunately, neither Nigel or Hipperson can be with us today. Hipperson's are too busy at the moment. But Andy is here, as I said, and thank you to all of them. Thank you to Danny and the railway company as well for making the building available for us to use. The association has a number of portfolio groups who manage activities such as volunteering and fundraising. The Education and Heritage Portfolio Group has been responsible for this project and has been fortunate to have members with design, graphics, IT and building skills. It has meant that the displays already in place and those that are still to come have been designed and fitted in-house, a considerable benefit financially to the association. And I think at this stage, those uh, Education and Her Heritage Policy Group uh, members who are here will put their hands up so you can be identified. No, I'm no, I see so now you can see the guilty people. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get John. Don't get John. That's the next one. <laughs> and I was going to say thank you also to John Moon, because when you get to look inside, you'll see there are a couple of uh, model layouts of the station back at the time that the railway was opened, and John is the person who built those. I wasn't here at the time. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> anyway, the Her Education and Heritage Policy Group is still keen to obtain photographs, all sorts of photographs, anything else, uh, and uh, we are always receiving new stuff. And sadly, we received a donation fairly recently from uh, Nicola uh, Crowhurst over here, who has donated what was left of Tony Crowhurst's collection of photographs and other documents and ephemera. Uh, and so thank you very much for that. But if anybody else has got something, and I believe you've got something here today as well, I'm, I'm told. I've got something in my bag, yes. Yeah, <laughs> like to reveal it. I don't know what it is. When the music stops, yeah. 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 Oh, right. Right. Oh, right, this is an original Hurricane nameplate. Oh, wow. It's taken off when the straight nameplates went on the smoke detectors. So amazing, thank you. Well, I think you know, that would be nice. Kiss. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank thank you. Thank you. Thank you. this securely now. Yeah. Just in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a replica one on my mantelpiece. So <laughs> <can we tell? laughs> Thank you. Where's that? I mentioned that there are displays still to come. Uh, COVID has delayed ideas for interactive exhibits. Big badge. But we intend to add more over this winter and in the coming years, including a computerised then and now photo display, which should be ready for next year. So whether you are a keen, mad keen railway enthusiast, interested in the history of the Romney Marsh, or just mildly curious, we hope there will be something for you in the Heritage Centre. To find out about the railway in the wartime, visits by royalty and Hollywood stars, seaside holidays, and taking the train to school. And the answer to two of the most common questions to staff, 
why was the railway built and how fast does it go? <laughs> and at this stage, I'd like to invite the Mayor of New Romney, Paul Thomas, to formally open, cut the tape, and, sure. and let us all in. Sergio's going to help as well, so okay. <laughs> 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 so, with, uh, when Sergio's sister, I now declare the Heritage Centre open. Yeah.